going to start having multiple people doing that, especially commercials. Um, there's some money, money in it, but you got to do your homework. Embryos. I think that's a way to go, uh, another avenue that we need to all improve as, as time goes on. Uh, with more success in the conception and the, te the technical part to get the uh, cost down a little bit more, we could all use that uh, in, in a better way. Uh, but the bottom line is uh, stats and data. Um, we have to have we have to have EPDs. Commercial people are looking at EPDs, the big boys. Uh, that's how they choose their stock. And um, uh, full blood's the same way. You have to have something to look at. This is not uh, 30 years ago or 50 years ago, and that's a pretty cow. Um, that pretty cow might not produce that pretty calf. Uh, <coughs> you collect that data uh, and know what we are and be consistent. If you're a CHR, you do them all. You can't pick three or four out of the herd or just what you can register because that's a true, a true, true a trait of our true stats of your of your whole herd, and that's what you got to look at. Uh, we need that carton states uh, uh, data. Uh, we need that for that. DNA testing is another tool. We need to know which one of these cows. We know these cows are great with uh, 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 feed efficiency and marbling and tenderness. How good are they? Some are good, some are not. Uh, and you, you got to build your herd on the best of the best. Uh, and I want to challenge this group. I know there's issues about CHR. I'm not just wanting the view that I'm going to sell. We need CHR on everything. And we should, because we need to know what the CHR stuff or the EPDs are on the ones that are harvested uh, to know which ones are best. That, that sheet that comes out on that one cow each year of how they produce that can. That's what I look at, and I think that's very important, and it really is. It's, there's no other way you're going to get that data combined and hand it to you in an envelope. Uh, it's, a, it's a very cheap product uh, that goes out, and there are buyers out there, whether they're commercial people or uh, breeding stock and all like that. If you don't have data, uh, you have weaker sales, and uh, we don't want that. We don't want that at all. And you're prospective buyers, they're doing their homework uh, on that. Uh, let's move on now to, to, to harvesting, uh, to harvesting beef. And, um, and uh, uh, from genetics, we're going to harvest it. Uh, want to eat off the whole plate. Well, what we can do with our niche program is, there's, a, there's an average of five to seven people they don't that baby can from the time it's born until it's on a plate. And uh, every one of them is getting a piece of the pie. Well, how about taking all the pieces of the pie and putting it on your own plate? Uh, we've got a super niche breed. There's no question about that. That the cattle that God gave us to take care of, uh, there's no reason to compete with the big ones. And What we can do is, 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 is this. We can either do it two ways. We can uh, self-contain them on the farm, feed them out ourselves, if we've got numbers, or if you've got a few. But if you've got a few, you can, you can, you can kind of co-op it. And if you've got neighbors around, uh, other red pole breeders around, group them after they get weaned and work, work on uh, uh, have someone feed them out, especially if if you want to try to get with the restaurant business, you've got to have consistency all the time for the orders. <coughs> if you got two calves and you want to sell beef every year to restaurants, they're one, when those two calves are, are gone, harvested animals are gone out of that restaurant, where's the other, other ones that are coming? So you, it's, it's very difficult if you're going to go into that, that part of, of, uh, uh, of it. But uh, what, what I like to do, and uh, what, what is do better, good for the breed, um, you use those reports you get from uh, CHR or, or your EPDs and all your other uh, uh, data. Keep 30% of your top heifers uh, 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 and keep your best bulls uh, for that year. Everything else, put it through the, through the harvest program. Uh, you can, if you do it right and you do your homework and you have your clientele, your low end 
is going to make uh, make you money or profit uh, more so than any other way you're going to you're, you're going to do it in the long run. Um, other other avenues of, of harvesting, of selling harvesting meat, or marketing harvesting meat. You got you got churches all over this nation in their parking lots one day a week selling uh, selling produce from March to end of October. Plants, fruits, vegetables, honey. You got you got people out there. All you need is a cooler, a, a, a tent, a little bit of dry ice, and uh, you can sell beef all day long out of that in the back of your truck or car or whatever. You got small town uh, markets that in, in parking lots that just have a once a day. A lot of these areas will have each day designated differently. So one day you're at the church, the next day you're at uh, in town, and and. and and maybe there's another one around too that um, people can go multiple times a week and meet there. Um, other ways is uh, county, uh, county extension offices have parking lots that they're, they're doing throughout this country. Online marketing. You can take a good, strong box, a uh, styrofoam box, uh, put your beef in it, put dry ice on top and bottom. You got four days in America to ship them anywhere you want to. And there are people doing that. Uh, and all you have to do is do your homework, get you a good, good uh, uh, website out there, and, and it works. Uh, you can make posters and hang, hand, handouts, very cheap, great advertisement. Put them in uh, public public places. You can put them put them with guards in a public uh, a bulletin board, uh, tractor supply, any of them, agricultural feed stores, uh, dealers, anything like that. Uh, put them in your church. They got public uh, uh, public bulletin boards. Uh, anywhere you put one, you get your word out. College sites. College students love ground beef, and anywhere there is college students, they want hamburgers uh, or something they can cook real quick. A um, uh, couple words I want to talk to you about harvesting too. You got to use the right words. And what you're trying to deal with is you want to talk to that wellness consumer. So a few words to be correct. Use the word harvested, not butcher or slaughter. Um, abattoir instead of slaughterhouse. Remember that these wellness consumers will make you or break you. They're the ones that's going to keep you in a profitable world. Uh, and, and get on the good side with them uh, and uh, with these wellness consumers. So that you can be very successful. Um, when you have, uh, uh, we, we, we're talking about the groups you know on the bottom. Uh, your family, if you've got a big family, lots of cousins, lots of aunts and uncles, word of mouth that way. Church groups, civic groups you're members of, the cattle groups that you're members of. That word gets out if, you, if you're going to uh, be in that program of selling harvest uh, beef. And, um, um, uh, and if, you, if, you, if you're small, one or two steers, that kind of deal and, and per year. Um, just do your homework. Get four to six to eight people together before you take off to the slaughter, or slaughter, you know that, to the harvest uh, abattoir. And uh, you get them all lined up when the day's coming in, get them all together and just start distributing off the truck into their coolers. Um, and you can sell them out that way. Um, encourage your customers to have chest freezers. Most people now have an upright refrigerator with a freezer. It holds about 16 pounds. It's about all the beef in the whole upright freezer. In most people's houses, the chest freezer, you put more beef in. Uh, and, and, and that's something you need to think about. I'm hurrying up. Uh, other ways of marketing your harvest should be co-op, local town co-ops are popping up everywhere. Uh, the majority of them want to be within a 50 mile radius of uh, pro products into that store from the 50 mile radius. Uh, uh, and and um, uh, go to these stores, talk to the, the guy in charge. And um, uh, certainly that's, that's a good way to get Get rid, uh, get uh, selling your, your 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 beef. There are local livestock networking distributors starting to pop up. Also, these are people that will buy the animal, 
All you do is send it to get that animal to the laboratory, and they take care of it from there. They pay all the expenses. They pay pay everything. They they have it cut up the way they want it. They pay you the hanging weight. And you're going to have more weight doing it this way because they're saving the tongues, they're saving the hearts, the stomachs, the oxtails. You buy uh, you get oxtails for eight dollars fifty cents a pound. You're in the beef business. Uh, those kind of things. They're saving things for different um, uh, uh, people uh, uh, in this country, and, and they can do all the distributing out to, to restaurants or wherever it goes. Um, you're talking about poundage um, uh, as far as that goes. Because the laboratory is getting all that stuff if you don't. Caterers. Um, the, the thing about caterers, uh, you, 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 uh, uh, hopefully it's uh, uh, a yearly thing. Uh, you, you, you work with them and you teach, teach them and you talk to them and you try to educate them. Caterers, I like people, uh, caterers to uh, be using meatloaves, lasagnas, meatballs, spaghetti. I want the hammers to be the least uh, because of, of when they go out and doing their their their, um, their catering work, um, uh, they're not usually trying to do uh, hamburgers or I like the word ground beef. Whoop. Restaurants um, uh, uh, try to avoid these chain uh, chain restaurants. Try to get to a rent a a. a, a, a uh, no chain restaurant, whether you're doing uh, yearly, um, uh, 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 furnishing the beef yearly, or if you're you're going uh, seasonal, um, uh, it, it, the, the independent owners are more designed to uh, to help uh, the wellness consumers to get um, the product that they want. More of these chain types um, have to go down corporate rules and um, uh, turn over tables real quick. So you try to go to those restaurants, you go in there and you go in there with beef and you give them some, let them try it out, tell them compare it to what they're using right now. And there's no question, uh, uh, Dr. Davis knows it tastes better, it's healthier, and um, you'll get them. Once you get them, um, you're gonna keep them. If you can keep supplying them steady. Uh, on the farm, this is just farms that have their own facility <coughs> on the farm, uh, grow a lot of their own vegetables, uh, uh, fruits, uh, honey, all that kind of stuff, and, and, and the patrons will come to them. And it may be that you're close to one that you can, uh, 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 if you're not big enough to do that, you can certainly, farms around it can supply that, uh, that, uh, that, that one, one farm of, of, of organizations. And um, uh, you can see your product that way. Uh, meat market. Anybody knows this picture? It's at Brian Sugars. Uh, Brian, last year, year before last, started up a, um, a him and uh, three or four other uh, 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 family fr fam uh, friends uh, that he has in that area. Uh, bought a uh, facility, revamped it, uh, great um, 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 the roads, uh, intersection where he's located, he's got a good way there, he's got a great parking lot, he even has a <coughs> drive through window, and um, this is only part of it here, uh, this is one half, and it took me forever to get that picture and get the women that was away from it so we could see it, the place was packed that day we were there. Uh, very nice way he pr presented it, uh, has a farm look uh, about it. The floors are just as slick as glass and you can lick off of it. And a very good professional uh, displays that he has. It's only one of them, they're just a row of them that keep coming down through here of how he does that. If you go through that door right there, this is what you see in there. This is cutting room. And he has a, 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 a people in there that are cutting them up and, and um, Either, either presenting them out here on the display or if people are coming in and buying a bulk, he does it that way. It is clean. It is slick. It is healthy. You can lick the floor in that one too. And I'm really proud of what Brian has done. Hopefully, some of us, uh, other of us can do that on down the line. Um, you can't do it yourself. You can do it like him with a kind of a co-op group that he does. Really proud of Brian doing this. 
Uh, let's move on now to uh, promoting uh, grid pole cows. We, uh, 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 how do we sell these things and how we promote them? There's so many different options of doing that. You just got to do your homework. Um, I hear all the time people say, well, I can't talk or, or I can't market or I don't know how to tell people this. Well, you will if you want to be successful. And I'm sure Dr. Davis will, woo, if you want to, if you want to make money, you better learn how to do it. And uh, uh, that's, that's, uh, uh, th that's what we've got to do. Uh, go to youth shows. How are we going to promote ourselves? Go to youth shows. Here's the one in Missouri uh, last uh, couple months ago. And uh, work with these youth. Let them show a calf if they're not your kin. Or if they're your kin, let them show a calf. Um, there's a lot of uh, kids out there that uh, are close to you. Uh, best way to stay out of trouble uh, for a child is to uh, sweat a little bit. Get off the um, telephone and um, listen to somebody who's got some um, uh, a little more experience and they got brains. Let's use them. Let's not go and burn them out. Um, we can go to um, uh, promote these cows in, in your program through the, uh, your local cattle association, your state association, the Blue Ridge, the Western States, the national meeting here. You have to promote. You got to get out there and talk about about, about what you have got, your operation, and things like that. Uh, it works very well uh, doing that. And and there will be you may talk to ten people and maybe one or two to listen, but that's one or two more than you had before you got there. Um, you can speak to local uh, FFA and 4-H uh, groups uh, at schools. Uh, uh, the the leaders of these programs they are dying for people and begging for farmers and ranchers of, or anything in agriculture to come and speak with these children. you got to remember the average, the, the society now in this country, and this is just a guess, but I'm, I'm, I guess I'm guessing halfway right, we're in the three and a half generations of being on the farm. Well, what does that mean? Well, you've lost your animal husbandry uh, ability. Um, you don't know how to grow a tomato, and you think you cows uh, milk by pumping their tails. And uh, uh, there's only a few people that are coming in now, and children, uh, that are staying on that farm and doing it, and I worry about that. And, uh, 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 but, but work with the FFA and 4-H. Adopt a kid program. Like I said, kid down the road, uh, somebody in town, somebody you know, child of a church member, uh, get these kids on the farm, put them to work. Um, uh, let them sweat. Uh, uh, let them tag along behind you. There's nothing wrong with walking down through a pasture and you look back and every footprint you made, uh, he, that, that child, boy or girl, is walking behind you. I know that happened to me because I did it behind my daddy for a long, long time. Uh, and, and everything he was saying, I was trying to learn what he was trying to say. But uh, take this room here. Take the room this morning that was full. Talk about the youth and what we're trying to do with the Red Pole. Take everybody out of here that's 50 years old right now. Leave. How many you got left? That's our future that's left. How many is in here? How many was in here this morning? How many will be at the bank? We've got to work with this, these children, these, these young people. And uh, we need to work more and we need to adopt more of them and have them in. M-A-R-C-H. Meat Animal Research Center. I think that's one of the avenues of, of loss that we have had over the years with the, all the research and all the data that they have sitting there. We need that data in ARPA, wherever, follow a committee or somewhere, and use all that information that they have that is not being used to promote red pole capital. We need to learn, everybody needs to learn about the history of the breed and the characteristics of the breed. Um, look on the back of the brochure that's, that, that ARPA has. It has, in that, it has the, 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 the characteristics of the breed. We can be using that to promote um, uh, 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 cows, um, uh, livestock, to the genetics, as well as the harvested program of that. History of Windmock. That was a very important herd one time from 1929 to 1949. Wasn't there but for 20 years. But a lot of this uh, red pole history and the genetics we have today can go right back to that farm. During that World Tour, 
the, the, the southern part of that tour, believe it or not, is going to be at the Windmock Farm. It's going to be in one of the buildings that are still existing. Um, I was asked to give the history of the Windmock there uh, as the uh, World Tour members are uh, having their meal that night. Um, that's an honor right there for me to do that. We're 50 miles from the farm, and a lot of our genetics on the farm goes based out of back to Windmock. But uh, anybody that's close to us, for God's sake, come in. If you're not on that bus, come into that that uh, that night, June the 19th. Mark your calendars. Be there if you can. Uh, we'd like the, the, those uh, those tour members to uh, see that we just like at the, at the junior show at the end uh, that we're supporting and meet these folks. Real chefs. You need to go to a real chef when you're discussing what you're trying to do uh, for for selling your harvested beef. Real chefs are also chemists, so to speak. They know what to do down to the cellular level. Uh, they know about wellness consumers. A lot of these real chefs have clientele that um, in their parking lots have Volvo, Mercedes, and BMWs in it. That's what you want for your clientele, your customers, uh, but, and because a lot of those are their wellness consumers. They know they want their family to eat right. And um, when you have chefs, that, uh, when you you sell their product to them, and they're asking you the price, and not we really asking them the price, then you're in the big business too. Local media, this is cheap, guys. You got uh, newspaper, local newspapers. You got. You got local radio stations that would just love for you on some of these talk shows just to promote your cattle. Um, you've got um, uh, 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 TV stations that are local. They do it there at home all the time. They just want to come out and give give segments to you uh, on on those on, on what you've got on your farm. Uh, country clubs that works out good either seasonal or yearly. Uh, if you can have a real chef in there and um, uh, and promote and teach uh, and, and just tell them what you have and know what they want is the same, you're going to be a winner there. Cattle magazines, you got your local farm credits put out one about every, every month. Farm Bureau does the same thing. You got your cattle magazines, your state, your local, uh, you got your journal. Let's see that journal of ads that we were talking about this morning. Put in there what you're doing. Doesn't have to be much. Tell us what you got. I'll challenge you one more. Go one more size bigger uh, than what you're doing right now. Uh, it will pay off. Um, farm booths. You can see a little bit of it, what's going over out here in the hallway. I really appreciate everybody that participated in that. I hope next year we did it before. Uh, very successful in Danville, Kentucky several years ago. I challenge everybody here. Bring a booth. Let's see what you got. No professional, just snap pictures and bring them in. That's what we want to see. Uh, you can take those farm booths to uh, local events. You can go to county fairs and state fairs, regional state and regional national meetings like we've got here. Go around that world tour. Have your booth there on the farm when you do the world tour. These folks are going to know. They're going to want to see and watch this stuff. Farm field days. Um, uh, this is these are days, these are field days that you can have on your locally just on your farm for for uh, 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 just a, a, a cattle meeting. You can certainly have them on regional, like Blue Ridge has them all the time. Uh, you can have state meetings there. You can, would certainly want to do it on the world tour. You have a field day, it's not a field day. Heritage breed days. Livestock Conservancy loves to have heritage breed days. Um, you can have one. I've, I've known the one that, uh, that, brought, uh, that brought veterans uh, retiring from uh, uh, military. They're at the age to retire. Their parents are old or gone. They don't want to lose the farm. They're, they're heading back to the farm to go. They need a pre they need some cows. What better cow to put on the farm like that and go feed grass and red pole? It works. Uh, have chamber of commerce. Uh, local farms. They want to have. Town to farm program. They put them on a bus and show people that three and a half generations show people out there that uh, there are farmers and what that means. Research uh, uh, programs like Dr. Davis and, 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 and uh, other, I can't remember, I see the, that one back there. 
uh, uh, they, 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 are, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I know of one that they had, and uh, they took a, 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 the, the university extension program, did a research on the, a 20 acre test plot, doing uh, seven different test plots in that 20 acres with multiple varieties of annual summer uh, annuals. And, and they went down to the did analysis, they did everything, they went to uh, measure how much tonnage it all and all is, and based on which one of those recipes were, which ones were the best. There were 78 farmers there uh, of all breeds of that uh, looking at that and, 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 and uh, seeing that. You can see some of the pictures there. They had little girls looking at, whoop, sorry. What'd I do? Give it a second. Gotta give it a second. Okay, here we go. No more cattle. Almost there, Dr. Dan. Uh, uh, those little girls there are sitting there just, just very intrigued over that guy showing them dun beagles. Dun beagles sitting right there. But there were 78, this was one of the small groups that came over. There were multiple groups came uh, to this. And they were sitting there and bred cold cows all over the place. And uh, wasn't planning on it, but we had two commercial guys who bought two red cold weaning bulls there that day. And they, we, it wasn't there to be doing that. Uh, but, it, you know, you, you never know where that pops up. Uh, what I want you to do here um, is, is, is to be, be conscious of your customers' needs when developing your genetic and harvesting program. Don't build every hot-looking Mustang and paint it pink because there's other people out there who want that hot-looking Mustang, but they want different colors too. So what I was trying to say is everybody's got, uh, 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 we are diversified. Your consumers are diversified, and what they want is what we need to produce to them. Um, and if you believe in your operation, do your homework and educate that wellness consumer. I can't use that word enough. You'll be fully rewarded that way. Thanks for letting me uh, um, um, uh, uh, help uh, in doing this and letting me share me some of your ideas to pursue in more um, detail. Uh, in, in your diversified country. And thank you, Dr. Dan, for putting me right behind Dr. Jim Davis. Yeah. <laughs> Wherever he is. Did he leave? There he is. Anyway, thanks a lot. You know, you came away with one idea that you maybe could use. Uh, it was worth your sitting here time and listening to this close of. So, I hope you came across with one idea that maybe you could try out to sell cattle to sell I could so, I'd like to thank everybody for your attendance. Four meetings in a couple minutes. Okay. And thanks again, Dr. I really appreciate it.
Yes. 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 Yes.